15 years. Mm. Not only are they supporting a genocide in Gaza with military support, diplomatic cover, money, they're aiding and abetting the killing of children, of innocent men and women, and supporting their torture. I mean, the torture is, forget about the killing, the torture is disgusting. But it's not just in Palestine where they have scant regard for human life. Mm -hmm. Under this government, we now have 30%, that's one out of three, children living in poverty. 30%. Under this government, we have millions of food bank parcels being sent out uh, every year to working people. They're working and they're going to food banks. Under this government, we have seen a rise in homelessness. But not only that, they are so callous. They criminalize the homeless for being homeless. Where are these people meant to go? I, I don't know. It's, it's a massive dystopia. They do not care about human life. Under this government, the NHS has been decimated. Ambulances don't come. And when they do, you die in them anyway. There are no beds. Under this government, we have raw sewage in our rivers and seas. There's not a single, there's not a single healthy river in, the, in England. Not a single one. Under this government, we have a cost of living crisis where people choose whether to eat or heat their homes. And one of these choices is going to lead to their deaths anyway, let's be honest. And the opposition is no better. We have Keir Starmer. A human rights lawyer who lies about the law. He stands up and he says that Israel has the right to do and commit war crimes, to stop water and power getting to the people of Gaza, half of whom are children. And because of his support and condoning of these war crimes, we now have children in Gaza starving to death. And you've seen it, they're skeletal. These skeleton children dying, just dropping like flies because of Keir Starmer and his support. And I will make it very clear, and Ordell has already made it clear. Israel does not have in any international law the right to defend itself against the people in the country. Under international law, under the judgments of the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, and you tell this to everyone. Yeah. Under international law, the people who are occupied have the right to arm resistance. Yeah. This is the legal right. Here's Starmer, as Lizzie has said, has made 28 policy U-turns and he's not even in power. He yeah. has no policy to bring 30% of children out of poverty. Poverty. He has no, nothing to bring, uh, to rid homelessness. He has no policy. Under this government, which will be, which will continue with Keir Starmer, 1% now, 1% of Britain has more than 70% of the rest of us, including those 30% in poverty. It is, it's a dystopia. It is, there's no such thing as the lesser of two evils. There is only evil. Okay, there's only evil. It is a dystopia because we are told we have this guy or this guy, the Keir Starmer, the human rights liar. Or we have Rishi Sunak, the genocider. We have, we don't have this, these two choices choices we have another and I just need to tell the British people because we are British people okay you cannot you cannot vote for change if you do not change your vote you need to stop voting the, the two and they have promised that they will continue supporting Israel against all humanity, against all law. They have scant regard to the human lives of the Palestinians and they have no regard to our lives or the lives of our children who they are put in poverty and who they continue to starve. The Workers' Party is different. We will 
right, raise people out of poverty. We will put a wealth tax on people. We will renationalize our hospitals. We will renationalize our water so we don't have sewage in the water. We will renationalize the energy and we will renationalize our trains. And one thing with the Workers' Party that no other party can say, and this is why everyone here is here today Free Palestine is not a slogan. To us, Free Palestine is a promise. Yeah. We will. Yeah. <laughs> And I read in the Quran this and it, it haunts me every night and it says in the Quran what is the matter with you what is the matter with you when people are oppressed and these oppressed people are crying God send us someone to help yeah. us we are here to help you and you voting for us you're helping so free Palestine workers party for Britain for Gaza please vote for us <laughs> Standing for 150 seats, I think that's a history as well. Many people are not aware of this, and I feel truly there's a revolution. This, this is the beginning of a revolution, and I've always been a bit of a rebel since I was at school. Teachers, you know I mean? So uh, I'm in a trouble causer, so I'm, I'm all in, and I think everybody should go all in. We don't do this half-heartedly because there's people's lives are at risk. Kids are dying. When will we wake up? And one of the things I would say, I think a few people complained about, you know, the state of the building. Um, absolutely, this was meant to be. I want, I want you to. I hope you feel uncomfortable. I want you to feel uncomfortable. <laughs> How comfortable do we need to get when we're seeing sickening things like beheaded babies, which is real beheaded babies in, in, in Palestine now, which, which the IDF are doing genocide. And it, as you can see, it works me up. We could have put these heads out, which we're going to put out later, but the heads will roll. Heads will roll. In, in, in Parliament, if not this time, next time, we're going for certain seats, and I believe we can win, and we play to win. As Peter said, the uh, certain seats, we may not win, but we're going to get votes. This is going to pick up momentum. I was with Imran Khan in 2018, uh, during the election, and I, I sensed that. I was quite close to him for a number of years. People used to laugh at us and say that you'll never come into power, or you, you, you never, you know, it's a joke, your party is a joke. Well. Then people were laughing when he came to power and we became so powerful they had to shut his voice off that they now put, they put him in prison. And to be honest with you, if you look at history, every every revolutionary is ready to do that. And I think most of you in this room are, are not going to stand something wrong that's happening. And in Islam, we have um, Prophet Muhammad so told us that if you see something wrong happening, stop it with your hand. That's the best of your mind. Number two, if not, raise your voice, which these people here are doing, right? If not, at least think about it in your heart. And the least that people in this room can do and campaign other people is to put a cross next to the right name. And not walking is not an issue. It's, it's, not, it's not an option. You think, oh, we're not going to vote, certain people say that. No, that's not an option. And the people you've got now here from the different backgrounds you can see from doctors, doctors to working class people to managers to different level of society shows it's a true party being created here today and this is why i urge you to support uh, the workers party the workers party is totally unique in there's no other party like it this is why i'm attracted i'm a businessman of those you who know me and people said to me you know as a businessman you shouldn't be getting involved with workers parties because you know the rebels and you know you're not going to get anywhere and you know you've got a lot to lose because um, you might not get planning permission for this or the Labour Council in Manchester control everything. I said uh, to them that in that sense I should be a Conservative really, but I'm a human being first and I have, I have faith in my heart that when I see kids dying, I will not stay silent. I will not stay silent and someone tells me not to get angry. I, I believe that's incorrect. I will not stay quiet in the space of genocide. And this is why I've, I've hosted this today. So guys, I hope you, uh, you're going to be comfortable for a bit. This, we've got places in the back, but this early on looked even more like a place to be bombed, but a fraction of what's going on in Palestine. And have I got less or more to lose people saying you, you might lose a bit of money than what, what's going on in Palestine? With the kids that are losing their parents, losing the houses, losing the hospitals, the mosques, every single basic human need they've, they've lost, and yet they're still living with dignity. They have more dignity than many people in this, in this country here. Many of these politicians... 
Assalamu alaikum. My name is Tanya Manzoor and I'm representing Cheadle. Um, I'm going for the MPC of Cheadle um, for the Workers' Party of Britain, um, led by George Galloway. He is our hero. He is the man who's been talking consistently for Palestine and I was with him in Gaza in 2009. Um, I wholeheartedly believe that this whole party is a good setup. He's a great MP. He's amazing to listen to in, in uh, Parliament. So I would encourage everyone to look on YouTube, follow his shows, follow the Moat show, Mother of All Talk shows. It's very informative and things that you will not hear on the mainstream media. Uh, I represent Cheadle and um, I want the best for Cheadle, the people of Cheadle. I don't believe that people in Cheadle are supporting genocide and this party is the only anti-war party and that's why I'm behind it and I'm standing. Thank you. We haven't had time to marshal the resources that we do have. So, This. I feel compelled to speak out because of the atrocities happening in Gaza, the unimaginable suffering, the profound pain and the sheer injustice. It has pierced the hole in my heart and it makes me cry. While we have witnessed admirable action through boycotts, through protests, through encampments, what does any of that mean if the MPs elected are choosing to turn a blind eye to everything? Mm -hmm. The struggle we face at home are undeniably linked to wider values that define us as a community and as a nation. <coughs> Just as we must confront the harsh realities of underfunded healthcare, economic hardship and inadequate housing, we must also stand against the injustice abroad. Now imagine for a second, we have a patient who comes to the doctor with multiple wounds. The doctor decides to treat the wounds only on one arm. What happens? The untreated wounds become infected and they spread. This is what's happening in this country. We cannot choose to address injustice selectively. Supporting a regime that commits genocide, a regime that leaves the limbs of children scattered across the rubble, a regime that exchanges four human lives for the murder of 274 innocent civilians. This is grave injustice. <coughs> and remaining silent on such matters does not align with the value we hold dear. Just as a wound ignored will only worsen, so will injustice left unchallenged. We have seen the consequences of ignoring these principles before. Under the leadership of the Labour government, we saw what happened in Iraq and Afghanistan. It was an invasion built on a web of lies. Millions of people lost their lives. It caused <coughs> untold suffering. Brave veterans lost their lives fighting for these misguided causes. And countless families were displaced, which has in turn caused the immigration challenges we are seeing today. This is a reality we face if we back a Keir Starmer-led Labour government that fails to uphold true justice and integrity. As your Workers' Party candidate, I pledge to tackle the issues <coughs> facing Manchester. I will fight for a stronger NHS. I will bring real solutions for the cost of living crisis. 
and I promise to work tirelessly for affordable housing. But I also promise to ensure our nation does not forsake its moral responsibilities on the global stage, particularly in standing against the genocide in Gaza. Thank you. For this opportunity to do, allow me to speak before you as a parliamentary candidate for Bradford South. I absolutely support what Param just said. So following on from all that, with my little input, in just a couple of minutes, I want to convey not just my vision, but our collective aspirations for a Bradford South, where I am standing on, thri on equality, justice, and opportunity. You'll hear repetition of things, but we're all fight fighting for the same things throughout the country. So please bear with all the candidates. You know, we will be repeating certain things uh, one after the other, but that's our collective voice that we are speaking. Our community in Bradford, I'm sorry I'm calling it towards Bradford South, where my uh, voters are, and hopefully they'll be listening to this, my, my speech on, on social media, and eventually voting for me. So the community in Bradford South faces challenges from economic hardships to, uh, to social di disparities. Yet, within us lies the unyielding support spirit to overcome these hurdles. As their representative, I pledge to be the voice that echoes their concerns in Parliament <coughs> and the hands that build solutions alongside them. Education, healthcare, employment, these are not just policy areas, they are the pillars upon where which we will elevate our community. <coughs> My commitment to ensure that every child has access to uh, quality education Every family receives comprehensive health care and every individual has the dignity of work. Bradford South deserves a future where progress, progress is not just a word, but a tangible reality. If elected as a member of parliament for Bradford South, my focus will be on revitalizing our local economy by supporting small businesses, fostering entrepreneurship, and <coughs> attracting investment. We will create jobs and stimulate growth. Enhancing our educational, educational institutions, ensuring that every school is equipped with the resources needed to provide top-notch education that no child is left behind. Improving healthcare access, expanding local healthcare services to reduce wait times, and ensure that every resident receives the care they need properly and promptly. Addressing housing concerns, working towards affordable housing solutions to ensure that every family has a place to call home. And, and finally, tackling crime and safety, collaborating with law enforcement and community leaders to create safer neighborhoods for all of us. My commitment is to be an MP who listens, who acts, and who delivers. Together we can make Bradford South a beacon of hope and prosperity. Together we will champion the values of the Workers' Party, solidarity, fairness, and progress. Together we will forge a future where Bradford South leads by example. However, I have to say this, it won't take long now. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, something that I need to say and beseech George, <laughs> uh, this vision cannot be realized without the full support of the party in this marginal seat of only just 2,000 votes. I hope that even at this 11th hour, the party can the party can get behind me uh, with the resources needed to win this and win this seat and succeed. I am Muhammad Hari Bhutta. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The seat of MP in Cheadle. I'm born in Stockport and grown up in Cheadle. Um, I qualified as a software engineer and a technology teacher as well. Uh, I visited Gaza with George back in 2009 and I'm now fed up with the illegal wars that are just churning out constantly. 
Um, I've, I've attended countless demonstrations for Gaza since October and before this time as well. Um, and I've looked at the other parties and saw that they fail us on Gaza. After research, I found that the conservative liberals and the Labour have strong ties with their friends of Israel. They don't condemn the massacre of thousands of civilians in Gaza at the hands of the idea. Hence, Labour Friends of Israel, Vice Chair Jonathan Reynolds. The reason I'm standing is I myself am a disenfranchised voter because I will not accept voting for the lesser of two evils. And right now in this country, we've got two parties and both of them are evil. You've got the blue party, the Tories, and you've also got the red Tories, Labour. And that is not a democracy to have to choose between the lesser of two evils. I was a member of the Labour Party when we had the Corbynism movement. I was a Corbynista in 2017. I believed in socialism, I believed in justice, peace, um, everything that Jeremy was, was presenting. But the smears, <coughs> the attacks, they came left and right, and that was from his own party. They didn't need the media or the Conservatives to do that. That came from in the Labour Party. So in 2019, I made the conscious decision and the right decision to walk away completely from Labour. Um, and to, to this day, I'll never, ever go back to them again. After the Iraq war, that was a case of fool me once, shame on you. But now with everything that the Labour Party have done in Palestine, it's a case of fool me once, shame on fool me twice, shame on me. For the things that are monumentally important to the quality of our lives and the future of humanity. Knowing that the cost of letting things go on as they are is just too high and too heartbreaking to ignore. Suicides are up, deaths of despair are up. There is a cost of living crisis, a housing crisis, a mental health crisis. People everywhere are suffering as we as a country continue to invest vast amounts of money and resources into overseas wars and regimes that are committing horrific ongoing war crimes. Teachers are having to spend their own money on school supplies and to pay for the food and clothes of the children in their care. 4.3 million of whom, are of whom are now living in relative poverty and this is just not acceptable. So here today we have activists, we have lawyers, we have doctors, charity workers uh, standing together to fight hard for a cause that is far, far bigger, more urgent and more important than any of us individually. Career politicians with no morals and no integrity are pulling apart the fabrics of our society, intentionally underfunding and mismanaging public services whilst profiting off the misery and misfortune of people in this country and pretty much everywhere else. They work hard to keep us divided and to convince us that we cannot beat the system, that we can't change it or overrule it, that we must pick from the lesser of two or three evils. The Labour Party had the audacity to claim this week that they put the country first and party second. In the same week, it was confirmed that they had made 28 U-turns on uh, policies and pledges in the best interest of British people. I've heard people talk about voting tactically, but when we vote tactically, in a way that compromises ourselves and our beliefs, all we do is maintain the systems that oppress us. We tell those people loudly and clearly that they can get away with anything so long as they are the lesser of two evils. Labour is not the lesser of two evils and they are not the only choice. And the only way for us to express what we stand for, what we actually need, what we want, is to put it on the ballot. I've been a lot of things, a project manager, an activist, a Samaritans volunteer, an ambassador for the Holocaust Education Trust, a spokesperson for dyslexia and dyspraxia. But if I am one thing, always, I am a fighter. And I will fight for what I believe in. And it, it, I'll tell you something, I don't belong for a number of years, and it, 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 it's shining today like a diamond. It was very rough around the edges, but the situation has made him so elegant because he spoke from the heart, as I was saying before. And uh, he's always been a good, good com comrade of George, another person is Sean, and all the people behind the behind the scenes. I see nobody's contribution is insignificant. Right? Bravo. Also saying it to give me a bit of courage.
first of all, I don't want to go on about housing or NHS or anything, but I will mention something about the austerity measure. During the Iraq war, the illegal Iraq war, there was one trillion, try to comprehend this, there's a thousand billion in one trillion. One trillion pounds was spent on an illegal war, which only one man, our right honorable gentleman, who tried to save Britain from that and got sacked for it. This is, this is a disgraceful moment because that one trillion pounds and the button of our austerity today, some GDP in Turkey, they don't even have two billion pounds for all year. And we spent one trillion. There goes my austerity and what I believe about what we could have done with that money. Now, our foreign affairs, the most disgraceful thing that I see on TV, it's not about what's happening in Gaza or anything, it's about our own MPs who are Muslim. They didn't even have the shame to condemn this action. I mean like, I see things in my life which were like the lowest of the lowest. Hospitals getting bombed, people going to get charity and some food, they're getting bombed, you know, just standing there to get some flour to feed the children. But they didn't have the shame to condemn these actions. Mm. What age are we living in? This has to be one of the most disgraceful moments for our Muslim MPs in House of Parliament. Mm. But dear George, remember one thing, six million Muslims fought Hitler in this country, not many people know. 3.7 million Muslims died defending this country. We have the right to speak in this country because we defended it with courage. Yeah. <laughs> one hope we were given, I am a grandson of a veteran. My granddad served in the British Army. I am not <coughs> in the Army, but today, in front of everybody, I salute my brother George for his courage. He is the other day my heart was crying because you said after five years you'll be gone. But remember one thing, you have planted a seed of revolution. Millions will eat that fruit. I finish my speech. Good evening and assalamu alaikum to everybody here. And thank you for coming and joining us tonight. Um, <clears throat> my name is Dr. Khalila Chowdhury and I will be standing in the Stretford and Ermson constituency. In 2019, the leader of our party, Workers' Party, Mr. George Galloway, he formed the Workers' Party of Great Britain. This was the foundation of a strong movement for rights of the working class and the common people. Today, we stand here as the only party that is built on the principle of government of the people by the people. My constituency is unique in the entire country because this is where was the birthplace of the NHS. <clears throat> in 1948, at the Park Hospital, now known as the Trafford General Hospital, was where NHS was born. But the sad state of affairs is that there is no accident and emergency, there is no maternity services. NHS, which is a jewel in our crown, the best health system in the world, is now struggling, owing to the failure <coughs> excuse me, of government and the lack of their forward thinking. People are now waiting to see their GPs for weeks and weeks. They are also waiting for hospital appointments for years. Unfortunately, people are not told the truth about how doctors and the staff within the NHS 
work day and night in order to help the people. But rather, this is due to the political spin and the cheap publicity by our government. But this has to change. Our NHS is viable. It can work better than before as free healthcare service and this is what I will fight for and we will all fight for. And I'll also like to say a healthy start begins with decent secure housing. Our government have failed miserably at this. People are struggling to keep their roofs over their heads and having to make tough choices between the basic necessities like food, utility, bills and mortgages. I will fight until I achieve affordable and secure housing for everyone. Our youth is our future and providing them with opportunity to grow and thrive in a conducive environment means we are investing in our future. I will also fight to abolish tuition fee, create safe localities free of crime, healthy environment so our generations remember us as the people who made the Britain of future. And lastly, I'd like to say, Palestine has bled and our hearts have bled with Palestine. The entire world has witnessed the most horrific genocide. Yet they turn to, <coughs> excuse me, yet our mainstream politicians and the government choose to turn a blind eye. I shudder to think if it was their families, their children who were so brutally massacred, is this the stance they would take? Or would they hold those individuals accountable? Who, are, who were responsible. We have all raised our voices in discontent in several ways, several platforms, including protests. But now our voices need to reach where policies are made. And that is, palace, and that is palace, the Parliament. And this is why, through our vote on the 4th of July, it is crucial that we elect individuals who are going to represent the voice of the people of Britain and Palestine. So the change is here and the change is now. Candidate for Paris South. And I thank, first of all, George Galloway who choose me for this uh, opportunity. And uh, I thank like, all the party as well for entrusting me with this responsibility of being a voice for our community in the parliament. We live in a diverse community which gives them opportunity to value each other and respect each other. We all have suffered a lot in COVID. Lots of friends were lost and family was like lost. But the worst of any situation or any pandemic is what's happening in Palestine now. A whole area on the map of the world is being wiped and everyone has a closed eye over it. The Workers' Party and George Galloway is a ray of sunshine and only voice which demands a ceasefire. There are lots of other issues we face every day. We have to tackle all the issues of our community and bring a positive thing. For that, we have to have a change of the system. I truly hope to be able to stand by my pledges and try to overcome the situations we face in our community and make a safer, healthier, and a greener environment for us all. Please support me, support Workers' Party, and vote for the truth. Vote for Gaza. <laughs> Thank you. I knew somebody would like that. <laughs> Dear guests, I don't really have that much to say, which is very, very rare for me. How are we doing, everybody? I've just seen some of my <laughs> friends in the crowd there. That's the proof to y'all. I've got one or two friends. Is that right, please? Don't show me up. Show me hands. <laughs> just want to say to everybody, I think we've heard everything. Everything about Palestine, everything about Gaza, everything about... <laughs> Mr. Galloway's 30, 40, 50 years of truth. I'm going to say just two things. That you've heard little Rishi Sunak. You've also, I'm going to keep this quiet, can't it? You've also heard 
Mr. Keir Starmer. And I don't think there's anybody on planet Earth that doesn't know what these two people stand for. So why the blindness? I'll say this, some people were saying to me, you know, maybe this or maybe that, or maybe we might struggle in Rochdale, or maybe we might struggle there. I say this, if you people work with Mr. Galloway the way I think you all can work, if your friends and families work with Mr. Galloway, work with, when I'm saying Galloway, I'm saying all of yours because you're all wearing this bike, so I'm just using Mr. Galloway there. If you all work and all your families and all your friends work the way I think, I don't know where they're getting this from. Everybody keeps saying it's a landslide for Mr. Starmer. I'll say this to you all, and can I hear you all say this? I'm thinking of a word beginning with F. I'm going to say F soon next time. Forget. Can we use that word, yeah? We're going to say as loud as we can, yeah? Forget Sunak and Starmer. Ready? Forget Sunak and Starmer. Guys, if I can shout as long as you're all, I think you're all asleep. Forget Sunak and Starmer. Go. Forget one more time, one more time, and honest to God, I'll tell, I'll tell you what, I'm from a boxing bag. I'm gonna say forget Sunak Stammer, you're all gonna say it, right? Forget Sunak Stammer! Forget Sunak Stammer! I just wanna say to all the people who are gonna stand this time, give it your best shot. Don't let any leaflets in the back of your cars, don't let any little sign throw it all on the, all in the battleground, and let's give these guys a fight. Let them know that they are gonna be in a fight. Mr. Galloway, all the very best, and every one of you people, all the very best. All the best to me as well, because we're going <laughs> to kick some ass. Thank you. For, for being here, many of my friends are, are in here who will be helping us. I must thank George for sort of inspiring me. And I'll tell you why I got inspired and why I joined the Workers' Party in a bed as well, because Bilal and many others uh, who have been helping us. So thank you to all of you. I must have brought you first before I come back. So much has been said already about so many things. I will not repeat those things. Your pain is my pain. It's a collective pain. We've all felt it hard and loud. We must do something about it. The only thing I would say or add to what's been said again and again is the cost of living crisis, but also for our university students. I work very closely with medical students as one of the directors in a leading university in this country. I see how it's affecting our youth, the cost of living crisis to the point if people are looking to drop out of courses or not going to medical school, or not going to higher education. From 3,000 to 6,000 to 6, and 9,000 in 2016, left a huge dent in our pockets, including mine, and I had two university going students. I do not want that happening. I want to remove feces for university students. We can do like what Germany does. We can do what like Scotland does. Why can't we do it here? Yeah. So that's going to be my first message to you, apart from what we talked about, social housing, policing, uh, tackling, Crime, absolutely fine. We are what we are here for. We will do those things if you are elected. I need to move on to something slightly more emotional as to why I did this. Like many of you, I was very disillusioned with the party I supported for many, many years, 25 years, maybe more. And I got disillusioned. I looked for a third option. I was thinking about a third option. I did not see the Workers' Party at the time. I was looking, yes, perhaps there will be some redemption. Perhaps you need to move people into the parliament. Perhaps these are the two parties we should support, or one of them which I did support wholeheartedly, till about three weeks ago. And this is what this is the bit I'm going to talk about. I've never told this to a wider audience. Only three people know this, and you're going to be the first listeners as a crowd of this reason why I joined the Workers' Party, why I got into politics. I had a dream. My wife was away to Pakistan. I had a dream early in the morning. I can speak a bit of Arabic. My friend was saying to me, Amir Habibi, where have you been? Where are you? And I'm saying, I'm fine. I'm, deaf, you know, I'm fine, I'm fine. And he said to me, come with me. And he showed me a child. And the child had a stone in his hand. And I said to the child, Fainak, I said, how are you? And he said to me, Amir, where are you? And I'm having this conversation, conversation in a dream. Would you believe it? So clear, I can just remember the, the dialogue and the child's face. And the child said to me, I'm, I'm sad, Anna has seen. I'm hungry, Anna Joan. I've not eaten, Ma Kal. So, and I got up. And I was not, in fact, I said to my friend, uh, fine, what can I do? And he said, what have you done? 
to do a lot of social work. Those who know me, they know I do. I work for charities. I work for six charities. It seems all wasted now. But I do what I do because of, of my connection with people. I want to work for people. I'm a doctor, but I do social and charity work. I got up with that ringing in my ears. What have I done? I thought I did a lot of work. I called my wife in Pakistan and she started crying. The moment I said, I saw a child asking me, what have you done for us? And she started crying. I said, Amir, is there still anything left in your mind to not to go into politics and make a change or at least try and make a change? And I put the phone down. Guess what? Who calls me? Mr. Amjad Bashir from the Workers' Party. And it's all falling into little blocks. Mm -hmm. Right? And he says to me, Amir, how are you? I said, I'm all right. And he says, well, I was standing for election. Do you know the Workers' Party? I said, yes, I saw you talking with George uh, very eloquently, both of you, in front of the parliament. Uh They've expressed um, the need for us all to be here. I think the fact that you're all here speaks volumes. It shows that we are all ready for the next front that the powers that be have let us down. We have been waiting and waiting and waiting for George to put together a party of integrity, a party that brings back integrity into politics, a party that brings accountability back to the people, a party that puts the people first. We're sick of being ignored. We're sick of being marginalized. We're sick of being told that we are different and that we don't matter. We are the backbone of society. We are the workers. Our fathers, our ancestors have worked extremely hard for us to be here today. We have lived the best of what Britain have, has, has to offer. And unfortunately, as my sister put it quite eloquently, we're in decline, not just as a country, but as a species. Because if we can't find humanity in humankind around the world to show to people in Gaza, how can we expect them to show us humanity at home? Why would there be people on our streets sleeping under shelters, cold, you know, afraid, alone, if the powers that be had humanity, if our taxpayers' monies were being used for the things that we entrust them to use them with for, then there wouldn't be homelessness. There wouldn't be erosion of communities through the funding cuts that are happening in every single public sector in our society. What are we expecting from these people? In fact, it's, it's, it's hard to call them people anymore because they've shown us that they're not. They're not people. They don't have hearts beating in their chest like we do. They, they couldn't find it in their conscience to vote for a ceasefire when they very well had the power to change the 40,000 that are dead now they could have stopped it at 5,000 or less even. And the people kept crying out that we don't want our tax monies going towards genocide, but they didn't listen. The ICJ spoke out, the ICC spoke out, and they still are not <coughs> listening. Nobody has committed to stopping the sale of arms to Israel. Nobody has committed to actually calling it a genocide in Parliament, apart from George. Integrity is back, our party is here, we're all unified, and we are going to make sure that they know they are being challenged and their days are numbered. <laughs> the only thing I'm going to leave you with, because I know that my very eloquent speakers um, around have, have already put it to you, is that we are doing our part and we are tying our camels. Now it's down to you. It's down to everybody in this room to take it upon themselves, make it their struggle, their part to go off and ring 10 people tonight. 10 people tomorrow and tell each person to ring another 10 people because they have set us a challenge. The powers that be want us not to succeed because they don't want to be challenged and they don't want everyone in this country to know that they are being challenged.
we must show them that we will bring the challenge to their doors if we have to because the power of the people is here and it's here to stay the triangle of, of power the triangle like this has been like this for far too long we need to rectify it and we need to show them through each of us doing our part making sure that our neighbors come out to vote that those postal votes get posted making sure that everyone picks up the phone or goes to, to, to people who need to be taken to the polling station on the 4th of July. We need you to make this happen. And together, like the brother said, we are making history yeah. and we yeah. will make history on the 4th of July. Everyone, and you know, we've heard really excellent speeches uh, here. All are inspired, all are up to the challenge. Uh, and all up to actually the long journey to challenge the hypocrisy in the British politics. Uh, there comes a time where your voice is no longer a choice. It's a duty. Mm -hmm. I think there are times when you see injustice, your voice is no longer a choice. Again, it's a duty. Your fight for justice is no longer a choice. Mm -hmm. We have, for many years, have seen the sufferings and we have witnessed it in great silence because the control of the media has always been um, supported and funded by the Zionist lobby and we have had no means and no platforms. This is the greatest opportunity for all of us. It's a great platform to express our anger, our frustration, uh, our support for justice and causes. When we see Starmer and uh, Sonnet joining the faces to support evil forces. All Muslims from prince, kings, prime minister, presidents, all audience, I really appreciate what you've done for Muslim community. I've, everybody knows everything anyway. Whatever going on in Palestine. I've got a little business uh, in Liverpool. For your awareness, I've seen the English people there in uh, full cold, snow, raining. This, I've seen them over there in Liverpool, near London Road, for protest. And I think these all come from your side. Honest to God, I really respect you so much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Blal Bhai. You invite me today. I can't say, you know, everybody, it, it's just the words. Everybody cry what's going on over there. So I feel proud today. I'm from Bari. I don't want to become a candidate. I'm just come here to thank you very much. I'm very lucky. We, uh, I've got six vote in my house and we all give the vote to your, uh, unfortunately, my candidate lost just for 100 votes from oh. Buddy, if you remember, to me, my thing. So I just come uh, to say you thank you very much. Oh, yeah. I want to say thank you for organizing this, and I think there was a, a need for it. Um, because I've been campaigning, and I know how hard it is. But what I see in these campaignings, we're not doing enough. We're not calling out the community. With my, I had 43,000 houses and knocked every single of those houses three times. Wow. Every house that I went to the first time around <coughs> and asked to vote for me, to stand for Palestine, to stand for our community, to stand for the rights of ourselves here, they all said that we have been informed by somebody else to vote for you. I don't see that right now. Yes. I don't see enough banners out there. Yeah. I don't see enough people out there mm -hmm. walking on the path. And I think we need to do more. We need to be more collective. And that's the only way we can get the message out. So it's very important that we come together, we do a bit more, we see how we can support each other, we see how collectively we can do. I mean, for example, Dr. Bernie, Milal, um, I think yourself, you're all knitted to each other yeah. in terms of Rush Romans. Yeah. Uh, Denton and so on. So we need to come together, we need to bring the forces together, we need to bring the teams together. Only then you'll make a 
difference. Otherwise, independently that we're doing at the moment, we're not going to go far. Mm -hmm. So if we want to make a difference, we have to hit it hard. And we have to hit it right. Now. So you need to knock them doors. The first advice George gave me was you have to knock the doors. It's getting our message across there. We are new. Nobody knows us apart from those in this room. We need to think that way. We need to make sure that everyone does know. I took out one of the biggest deputy leader seat in Manchester. <coughs> I did it four weeks. So if I could do it, I'm sure we can all do it. We can all do it collectively. We have to do it. Thank you. So thank you. That's all I want to That's a workers' party. Uh, I got to learn what the campaign was when Shabazz was standing. Uh, Abid here is a very good friend of mine for years. He's been inviting me to all the workers' parties, uh, events that have been happening. I've not gone to any of them due to my time. Today, I thought I'd pop in and need to get out. So what I, all I want to say is, if you don't know who I am, I think most of you do. You're a superstar. <laughs> my name is Marcus Nissa. I am from the entertainment media. Do add me and share everything you can as workers parties on my wall, on my Facebook, on my social media because I've got lots of celebs and I'll make them to share as well. And this is how we can spread the word. This is how we can spread I know entertainment very well, but I know this is entertainment as well. So George, well done. George is a lion. You know the the lion in the jungle, they say he is not the biggest and he is not the strongest. But it's the way he walks and that fear and he goes into and everyone just goes, whoa, that's George. Thank you, Mr. Mr. George Galloway. So when you look at me, you probably think, who is this child? 25 years old, new to politics, never done anything like it before. Uh, won by 1100 majority Landslide, against a sitting Labour councillor. Um, so Say that number again. 1100 <laughs> See, this is what it is. Anyone can stand, and as long as you get the people to believe in you, you can convey that message. And if you can knock on as many doors as you can, speak to as many people as you can, businesses, people that sit at the top of families, for example, yeah. just anyone and everyone, I'd suggest you to get out there and speak to as many of them as you can. And we've got our great team over here, Rafi and Wakar. Yeah. They're from Rochdale now. We've been campaigning every day and night. There's not an hour we don't knock on a door or speak to someone, whether it's on social media, in person, online, on the phone, you need to get on it okay. as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, John. It's La ilaha illallah. Wow. This one said, There is no God but Allah. Yeah. Right? And Muhammad Rasulullah. And if we believe in that from our heart, which is our Iman, and this is what shows it, it's not just praying and doing these things. That's important. We have to show in our actions. That's the number. We have to break the, the 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 idols of fear, of greed, of lust, of what are people going to say. And if I believe that, then I believe my life and my death is in Allah's hands. And you know, I believe that the people that are most honoured, like Malcolm X, and I think people in honour history that they give their life in the way. And some people say that about George. I hope that doesn't happen to him. This is, you know, maybe this is why I've got bulletproof something away but inshallah Allah protects him and this is why these people are remembered Izzah and Zilla honor and shame is given from Allah and your risk which is your sustenance and poverty is given from Allah so if you believe in that then nobody's going to stop us and I, I believe one other thing through this process I've learned more than a week or two which I've been a lot of I was ill before that quite ill I've learned more about world and life and even things that will improve my personal life that I've probably learned in the last 10 years and that's true and it's invigorated me and makes me happy to do that, so thank you. Hey, Dr. Daoud, Brother Bilal, Excellency, Ambassador Peter Ford, Councillors, Shabazz and Minam, Distinguished Elders and Brothers and Sisters, Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa I can't tell you how moved I am by the numbers of people that have been in this auditorium today 
if this is my last editorial, if I go the way of Brother Markham, I will go happily because this has been truly inspiring. So many people and so many candidates and two Workers' Party elected members in Greater Manchester, Shabazz, who took out the mighty deputy leader of Manchester City Council. Yeah. Round of applause, please. <laughs> and Councillor Menam, who also took out one of the top Liberates in Rochdale. That's why I asked him to repeat the number. He's 25 years old. He was fighting a big wig in the Labour Council in Rochdale and he defeated him by 1,100 votes. This is a triumph of a man. This is a triumph of effort, a triumph of teamwork, a triumph of going into battle, not knowing that you are going to win, but knowing that you are doing the right thing standing for the right thing, being on the right path, Sirat al-Mustaqim, being on the right path and being righteous in your intentions. And both of these victories were splendidly won, but they will not be the last victories that we experience in this region. With the power that is in the room, with the influence that is in this room. With the wealth that's in this room, we are going to move mountains in this region. This time and the next time. And by which time, I don't mean five years time, I mean at the next local elections also. We have excellent chances to win parliamentary seats here in this region, up and down this country, we have a seat candidate standing in South Hall. I know none of you gamble, but if you did, he's the hottest bet in British politics today. Labour sacked the elderly Sikh gentleman who stood for them and represented them in Parliament for decades and put a, a white Starmerite councillor in his stead. And the Sikh people in South Hall are absolutely furious and they are lining up behind our candidate there in legion he may have the biggest majority of all of us and we are all fighting powerfully in every one of the seats that we are standing in when tanya uh, came with me she made it sound like a holiday but it was no holiday when tanya and i fought our way in some cases literally fought our way into Gaza in a convoy to break the siege. We came upon a scene of such devastation that we cannot possibly allow people to talk about all this beginning on October the 7th because we were there a dozen years ago and I had been there four years before that on a siege-breaking convoy. I was in Sabra and Shatila camp on the day that Israel invaded in 1982. As has been said, I've been in this cause for half a century. We will not allow people to pretend that all that's happening in Gaza is a response. Israel defending itself as Angela Rayner said on television in that Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs uh, <laughs> session that they had on ITV the other night. We will not allow it to be no, said. But when Tanya and I were there, we came upon a destroyed building with a little girl weeping amongst the wreckage. She had lost all of her family in the savage Israeli bombardment. And she asked a question which I made famous. She said, where is this Ummah that they tell us about in school? Why did they leave us alone to face 
this? What did we do to deserve this? I turned away from her for I could not answer. But I can answer now. We are this Ummah. We are not going to leave them alone. We may not succeed in saving them, but we will at least be able to answer on the judgment day when asked, what did you do when these children were being torn to pieces? We'll be able to say that we fought it with every breath that we had that we did everything that we could. So there's another famous piece from the Quran that you were quoting. Judge yourselves before you are judged. Judge yourselves. Did you do anything? Did you boycott all the now long list of things that we must boycott in which case why did you boycott coca-cola but you didn't boycott labor yeah. how can that be justified you boycotted, you boycotted mcdonald's but you voted for a labor mp what kind of answer will that be as has been said ad infinitum here at this wonderful table this evening labor are co-responsible for this they could have stopped it they could have forced the british government into demanding a ceasefire stopping selling weapons they could have urged the british government forced the british government into voting in the united nations to sanction Israel, stop Israel, but they did not, and they did not as a matter of deliberate policy, even though they knew it would anger you. Because the truth is, they thought they could safely anger you. Yeah. That you and your votes did not matter to them as much as the approval of <coughs> the supporters of Israel in Britain, who are powerful <coughs> indeed, but not as powerful of the millions of votes that Labour is going to lose in this election. Millions of people, including all the Muslims, but including millions of others, as our brother from Liverpool said, most of the people on these protests are not Muslims. They're white English people, Scottish, Welsh, Irish. They're not Muslims. Many of them are not even religious believers. But they're humans. They're humans. And they cannot bear what they are watching. So do the maths. There's three and a half million Muslims. And the majority of people aroused by what's happening in Gaza are not Muslims, do the maths. That's millions of votes. And it's our job to organize them, to channel their anger, give them options to vote for. They don't, they shouldn't need any option. I mean, when people tell me, you know, almost all Muslims in Rochdale voted for me. Almost all. I mean, we achieved 25. And he married a billionaireess. Mm -hmm. Nice work if you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> but Rishi Sunak, it's not our problem. He doesn't represent us. We'd never vote for him. But Starmer is our problem. Because he's representing a party that was formed and whose purpose was to stand up for us. And it is the betrayal of his party, the betrayal of the history you talked about, Dr. Nasri you talked about, uh, Michael Foote. It's the betrayal of people like Mr. Foote, like Mr. Ben, like Mrs. Castle, 
It's the betrayal of all the pioneers that built the Labour Party and who now have to see it from their graves, have to see it as the betrayer of everything that a Labour Party is supposed to stand for. And that's why we say we are the real Labour Party. We are the party that stands for the things Labour was supposed to stand for. We are the authentic, real deal of a workers' party. We stand for the ideas that must be present in every country. Every country needs a party that will stand up for the working people, the people who don't have anything to sell except their work, their labor, and who if that labor is taken away from them, that right to work disappears, or the price of it is driven down, or have bad luck with an illness. I met a man today, once a tower of strength in Rochdale, one stroke, one stroke and he's incapacitated, no longer the man that he was, unable to provide for his family. We're all just one stroke away. We're all just one redundancy away one bit of bad luck away from poverty and from immiseration of all of the hopes that we had. And that's why we have to be together. Muslims have that. The white English people don't, really. Muslims have networks, extended families, mosques, communities that imperfectly will support them come and visit them. But this country is full of tens of millions of white English people who don't have any of these support networks, this safety net. And that's why the state needs to be that safety net. Dr. Kalila was not exaggerating when she said, we've got people waiting years for hospital attention. Just imagine that. Years, Starmer lied on the first debate when he was asked if your relative desperately needed hospital attention and you could pay for it, would you? He said, no, I wouldn't. He's a liar. He's a liar. Anybody who could, would, if the alternative was the suffering of their own family members. What he should have said was this. Yes, I would. But why should I have to? And what about those that can't afford to? That was the honest answer, but don't expect honesty from Keir Starmer. He called Jeremy Corbyn his friend. Now he tells us. He went through the two elections he fought under Corbyn, regarding him as practically a demon. He says that when he was asking the British people to make Corbyn their Prime Minister, he didn't really mean it. And now he has vindictively hunted Corbyn out of the Labour Party and is now trying to get him out of Parliament altogether. Well, Jeremy intends to be in the next Parliament. I intend to sit next to him as I always have, and I ask you to send me my friends here with us. And just imagine if the next time you saw us, we were all sitting on the green benches in the House of Commons. Do you think Britain would be better if that happened? In two polling districts, in an entire day, of heavy polling, only two people didn't vote for me. But when I hear that Mohammed this or Ali that is going to vote Labour, I almost want to go 
and find them and ask them why how how is that possible and if we take that approach to every Muslim voter and Councillor Shabazz is completely correct you, you have to meet the people you have to find them you have to talk to them but you have to say to them how how could you possibly vote Labour and then go and pray? How could you possibly vote Labour and then fast? How could you possibly vote Labour and go in a house? How is that possible? It's as serious as that. Now, this Manchester Evening News, are they here? Probably hiding. <laughs> this Manchester Evening News and it's on my back every day every day I get a call from them a negative call from them they keep saying you only care about Gaza and that's not true I say we're not a single issue party but if we were Gaza is the mother of all single issues <laughs> I say to them, but they never ever print it. If you had interviewed me in 1940 and you had asked me, why do you keep going on about this Holocaust? Why are you standing for election to try and stop this Holocaust? Who would look better today? You, the journalist, or me? that kept going on about it, stood for election on it. But of course, we are not. <clears throat> Councillor Shabazz, his brothers who are here, they go out every night taking hot food to freezing cold people sleeping in doorways. That's how much their single issue they go to Bangladesh and provide development aid. They go to Gaza and provide vital equipment. Not because they're Muslims, but because they're human. The people they're giving the food to under the bridges. I've been with them on some very cold nights, only a few. They do it all the time. They're not Muslims lying under the bridge. That's a Allah. They are non-Muslim humans, and they're feeding them. So we care about humanity. And above all, we care about the decline of our own country. I winced when Bilal said, some of you were not alive when Princess Diana died. <laughs> <laughs> and before our time, he said, Brother Malcolm was sure. It wasn't before my time. Unfortunately, I remember both things so well. And while I'm on about Brother Malcolm, when people ask about this lesser of two evils, he pointed out, and I'll say the same thing, labor is the greater of two evils, not lesser. Labor is the greater of two evils. Why? For the reason that Malcolm said, it's the difference between a wolf and a fox. The wolf is very honest. Its face tells you it's going to eat you. It's going to destroy you. So you can face the wolf knowing your fate. But the fox looks like it's smiling and is coming towards you with a false persona, but its intention is exactly the same, to eat you, to destroy you. So better the wolf than the fox, no? For me, it's definitely better the wolf than the fox. We know what the <coughs> Tories are. We know what Sunak is. We didn't know quite how wealthy he was. 
he knocks your wealth into a cocked hat. Hi, Assalamu alaikum everybody. It's been a great, great meeting today. Aaj milne ka yehi maksad tha ke just to introduce to you all of our candidates who are standing, jo log khade ho rahe workers party ke liye, ye manchster ke candidates the. अब आगे आगे देखो क्या अभी तो पार्टी शुरू हुई है अभी हमारे ये मंचर कैंडिडेट्स हैं कल आप और कैंडिडेट्स देखते जाएंगे अन पार्टी बढ़ती जाएगी एंड गुड लुक ऑल वर्कर्स पार्टी आज बड़ा सक्सेसफुल कैंपेन हुआ है जिधर 18 कैंडिडेट्स लॉन्च हुए 151 एरियाज में और लोग जॉर्ज गैलोवे को लीडर मानते हैं जिसे के 50 साल से ज्यादा वो फलस्तीन का इशू और दीगर इशू दुनिया में जो से भी हैं जिधर मजलूम पिसे जाते हैं बजाय ये हो कि अगर यूके में या अब्रॉड में कश्मीर के मसले पे कई दफ़ा बात की है या हो यूके में जिधर वर्किंग क्लास पिसी जा रही है जिधर के बिलियंस ऑफ पाउंड्स स्पेंड हो रहे हैं वॉर्स में जो से यूक्रेन हो गया या इसराइल को इक्विपमेंट दी जा रही है तो बजाय वो पैसा उधर स्पेंड होए जॉर्ज कहता है कि वो पैसा इधर वर्किंग क्लास लोगों पे स्पेंड होना चाहिए अस्पतालों पे स्पेंड होना चाहिए एजुकेशन पे स्पेंड होना चाहिए एनएचएस पे स्पेंड होना चाहिए जो से नर्सेज स्ट्राइक कर रहे हैं ये सारे लोकल इश्यूज हैं और ये सिर्फ इसका इशू ये नहीं है कि गाजा इसका इशू उससे बहुत बड़ा है और हम एज ए मुसलमान हमारा फर्ज बनता है इनको सपोर्ट करें जिधर लोगों ने आवाज़ नहीं उठाई गाजा के लिए या हमारे हकूक के लिए तो हमें उन इधर उधर हमें वर्कर्स पार्टी को सपोर्ट करना चाहिए जो उनसे बंदे ने अपस्टेंड किया है सीज फायर से उधर या जो उनसे जिन्होंने अपोज किया है सीज फायर या जिन्होंने इस बात इस माशरे मौजू पर बात नहीं की उनको हमें और कई फ्रेंड्स ऑफ इसराइल हैं उनको हमें अपोज करना चाहिए एज ए मुसलमान शुक्रिया